best man that you see in this picture brutally murdered his small house all because she wanted to leave him. It's quite a strange phenomenon that a lot of men cannot accept rejection from their side checks. We begin our story here in Kai district in Matebelele North. We met brilliant Nguenya, a 33-year-old nurse who had recently moved here from Wange district after deployment four months prior. She was in a relationship with 50-year-old Tapuoma Hohoma who was a security guard at Peace Security Company and based at Kazungula border post where vehicles crossed from Zimbabwe into Zambia. The two lovebirds had apparently met in 2007 and had pursued a 10-year-long secret relationship because Tapiwa was married. He would visit Ngai once in a blue moon because it was a long-distance relationship. On the 7th of October 2017, he visited her like he usually did, but he had no idea that she had contemplated ending the relationship. She told him that she was no longer interested in continuing a relationship with the married man. Tapiwa did not take this rejection well. He left dejected and miserable. His ego was bruised and his pride torn apart by her words. Even when he returned home to his wife, he failed to accept this. He decided to retaliate. He was so blinded by rage that two days later, he decided to go back to Nkai to convince her to take him back. His anger was simmering all the way from Wange to Nkai to an extent that as soon as he arrived, he picked up a metal pipe on the side of the road which he intended to use to threaten her if she refused to take him back. Meanwhile, Brilliant left work at around 5 p.m. and proceeded to her neighbor's house because she was out of air time and she wanted to borrow a mobile phone in order to make a phone call. Her neighbor was Ndoda Namutlaolo, a combi driver who plied the Ngai Kweka route. As they were sitting on a septic tank having a conversation, Tapiwa emerged holding a metal pipe which she was tossing from hand to hand as a way of intimidation. Tapiwa then called his girlfriend but she refused because she was afraid and she hid behind Ndodana. He then approached the both of them and attempted to strike Ndodana on the left side of his neck. Ndodana managed to grab the metal pipe and he wrestled it out of his hand. This further infuriated Tapiwa which led him to leave Ndodana and attack his ex-girlfriend. Because he no longer had a weapon, he attacked her with his bare fist, chipped her to the ground and then kicked her on her head with his booted feet. She was laying there motionless, indicating that she had lost consciousness and she was bleeding from her nose and her mouth. Ndodana seeing that he could not overpower any enraged Tapiwa ran to the police station to make a report. Tapiwa's anger did not subside. He picked up a concrete block and smashed her head while she lay on the ground. When he saw that she was probably dead, he fled the scene. By the time the police arrived at Brilliant's house, he was nowhere to be seen and Brilliant was dead. The police managed to catch up with him along Guy Road as he was looking for lifts. When he was questioned by detectives, he claimed provocation. He insinuated that Brilliant was having a sexual affair with Ndodana and that she had told him that she now had a better boyfriend, which led him to lose his temper. He also claimed that he had bought her a stand and built her house until window level, and this was a big emotional and financial investment. This is the reason why he could not accept her rejection. During trial, however, his version of events kept changing, and he was not consistent with his story. It was clear during cross-examination that he had lied to the police that Brilliant and Dodana knew each other. They barely knew each other. They had only known each other for three days. His story collapsed under the weight of evidence and he pled guilty to a lesser charge of capable homicide. He could not explain to the judge why he proceeded to smash her head with a concrete block even after she had lost consciousness but he claimed that he wanted to wake her up which is both illogical and unreasonable. High Court Judge Jay Makonese did not believe that Tapiwa killed her by mistake because he proceeded to smash her head with a concrete block even after she lost consciousness. The judge then took into consideration that he was 50 years old, was married with three children and was the sole breadwinner. However, he could not look past the fact that this was a barbaric act on a defenseless woman, despite the fact that he claimed that he had invested a lot of money in the relationship. Despite him pleading guilty to capable homicide, the judge found him guilty of murder with actual intent and sentenced him to 25 years in prison. He will only be released in 2047 and he will be 75 years of age. Instead of enjoying his prime, he is rotting in a Zimbabwean prison, all because he could not accept rejection from his side check. Had he been faithful to his wife, none of this would have happened. May brilliant soul continue to rest in eternal peace.